sorry, I was just um, busy drowning a man, you know, making him sleep with the fishes. Because uh, this is the light-hearted intro to the Mafia de Cuba review. Although I suppose they're a, they're a cu Cuban Mafia, so it's, it's more like... It's sleeping with the... With the oh, this is definitely racist. Mafia de Cuba is a new game of hidden roles, like Werewolf or The Resistance, except this time, instead of monsters or traitors hanging around in your group of friends, it is thieves. All the same, those are tough streets to walk, but Mafia de Cuba comes sauntering down them dressed in metaphorical furs. We've got a stack of weighted poker chips, a handful of fake diamonds, two plastic bottles of tequila, and a seductively svelte manual. And all of it comes in this fake cigar box with a fake set of cigars. And the expansion comes in this adorable matchbook thing. Ooh, Mafia de Cuba, please teach me how to play and don't trap me in a recidivist criminal syndicate whereby the more I work for you, the more I'm perceived to owe you. Mafia de Cuba is a quick game taking just 15 minutes for between 6 and 12 players. And 6 might sound like a lot, but here's where I remind you the resistance needs at least 5 and tends to explode in a great ball of anti-fun with any more than 8. Whereas Mafia de Cuba is still good even way up into the sacrosanct ground of double digits. Now, before you start playing, one player is going to be the Don and we'll get this fabulous box of stuff. And while that might sound exciting, let me warn you, the Don's about to get the bejesus burgled out of him. So, here's how the game works. As the Don, you're gonna have your fabulous box of treasures, you're gonna reach in <gasps> under the fake cigar lid, and you're gonna remove between zero and five diamonds. Then, you're gonna close the box and pass it around the table for everybody to have a look. Now, there's a couple of fiddly little rules here, and I'm gonna ignore them, but you can pause if you wanna see them. And then everybody else is gonna receive the box, reach in and take either a roll chip or any number of diamonds. And finally, it's gonna go all the way around the table, back to the Don, they're gonna get their box of diamonds back and probably pull some kind of face. The Don getting his or her box back is absolutely the best bit in Mafia de Cuba. It's hard to tell which is funnier, receiving an empty box or an almost empty box. And I don't mean any of this as a slight. It's like how the best moment in Werewolf is when the werewolves open their eyes and decide who to prey on. And it's a moment so full that it threatens to split with energy like a baked potato. So now the game starts and it's the Don's job to figure out who took his or her diamonds and get all of them back. And they do this by grilling everyone at the table and occasionally saying, empty your pockets. And that player then reveals a chip, at which point the Don's lost or all the diamonds they took. So the Don's playing a deduction game and it's a lot of fun seeing this player who wanted to be the center of attention struggle and sweat. Now, this is going to be almost impossible and this is where these come in. If you're playing with eight players, you get one bottle of rum. If you're playing with 11, you get two. And you can say these by way of apology, so the game doesn't just end if you pick someone with a chip. But basically, the Don's screwed, right? Well, no, because that's where these wonderful rolls come in. So first up, we have loyal henchmen. These guys just win if the Don wins. A whole team of rogues trying to make sure the Don recovers their diamonds who want to tell the truth about what they saw in the box. Confusing this though, are CIA and FBI who win immediately if they're ever told to empty their pockets, but they win alone. So these guys are both gonna be trying to make sure the Don doesn't pick one another. Confusing everybody are the drivers who win if the player to their right wins, which means they have to figure out what on earth the player to their right is trying to do. But the real reason, the real reason that the Don has an easy time is if the Don ever makes a mistake, the winner alone is the player who took the most diamonds.
Here's a downside of hidden role games that you might not have considered. The experience you have, whether you're a liar or innocent or ignorant or the cardamom seeds in the curry that make everything spicy, that's not up to you. Whereas in Mafia de Cuba, it is. If you want to be the center of attention, be the Don. If you want to have a straightforward game, tell the truth as a loyal henchman. If you want to have fun, why not steal all the diamonds in the box? Because A, it'll be fun. B, the players to your left and right are going to look just as guilty. And C, however crooked you look, there's going to be a CIA agent out there trying to look as crooked as a bag of snakes to make sure they get picked instead of you. And on, it's not just the tone of your experience this helps create. It also makes the ending of Mafia de Cuba that much more fun. When the werewolves win in Werewolf, it's like, okay, they didn't even choose to be on that team. In Mafia de Cuba, whoever wins succeeded at their objective and chose that objective. So you want to just applaud them. And as one more bonus, if you have friends who don't really enjoy lying win this game, they might not even have to. Here's another advantage of Mafia de Cuba's structure. Let's say you and I are playing a game. You and I have got beers and we have a disagreement and we're yelling or lying or whatever. That disagreement is only between you and me. In the resistance or werewolf, I'm trying to get the whole table on side and there's mob mentality and it can be stressful and, you know, we solve that and we go right into another argument. But with this, the disagreement between you and me is only between you and me, whether one of us is the Don or we're two chip characters trying to get one another on side, you know, everyone else around the table can just watch. It's a lot closer to Skull or Cockroach Poker, the way you have moments of great tension, but then you can relax and that's a spectator sport for everyone else. It's not this constant high energy game and I love that. So, overall, Shut Up and Sit Down quite happily recommends Mafia de Cuba. It's like a caperinha of a game, you know, it's it's fruity and refreshing and, and light and a very savvy investment for drunks. Oh, 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 but there's more tension in store for you and I because if Mafia de Cuba by itself is perfectly good, there's also some extra rolls in the base set, well, one of them, and a whole expansion of extra rolls, optional stuff for you to add in. Whether then this game is good or great comes down to how good these rolls are. And we start with the one you get in the base set the cleaner. Now this replaces one of the henchmen and he is, well, a psychopath. The cleaner waits until the Don has said, empty your pocket to someone else and then... Empty my pocket? BANG! If the cleaner just shot one of those blue government chips that was about to win the game alone for being accused, the cleaner wins instead. Otherwise the cleaner and the player they just murdered is eliminated from the game. The cleaner's disgraced. This chip this chip is absolute gold. I mean, not literally, it's compression molded plastic with a bit of sand in there to give it a satisfying 12 gram weight. But it's just so funny. The cleaner makes everyone in the game jumpy. It makes the cleaner jumpy. It makes the CIA and the FBI super jumpy because they don't want to get shot. It makes the henchmen all jumpy because they don't want to die either. And I mean, whatever the cleaner does, it's entertaining. If the cleaner shoots an FBI agent, that's shooting the moon in Mafia de Cuba. You're just going to want to applaud. If they shoot a jewel thief, that's hilarious. If they shoot a henchman, that's even funnier. Ah, it's so good. I give the cleaner five Joe Pesci's out of five. Ooh, that's a good start. So it's all down to the expansion. If this can keep up that level, this is a must buy. Ah, it's tense. And nothing in it is as good as the cleaner. The best role in it you can add to your game is the Diamond Lover, and she's a bit tedious because she's the only woman in the game, she's hot pink, has her boobs out, and is the most fickle personality in Mafia de Cuba. She wins alone, no, she wins if she's picked on, uh, like the CIA or the FBI agent, except she wins together with the person with the most diamonds. So initially, cheeky diamond thieves want her to be called on, but then as the Don gets loads of their diamonds back, then uh, the thieves don't want her to be called on, so that's a kind of, Kind of interesting shifting allegiance, but if it's the best role in the box, then, ooh, we're in trouble. The traitor is a kind of backup leader for the Don. The traitor needs the Don to lose, then takes over the game, the minion wants them to win, and wins if then they can recover all the diamonds. They take the box. So that's kind of cool. It's kind of interesting in big games. And then it's all downhill from here. The revolutionaries replace the CIA and the FBI, except they're actually a team and they win with some of the players who took the least diamonds, but it's a great 
chunk of rules for not a lot of gain. The Crooked Lawyer is downright boring. He replaces the driver and wins depending on if the Don makes a successful or unsuccessful accusation the first time. He wants the Don to win or lose, but that is both more rules than the driver and less fun than the driver. Finally, there's the fake diamond, and this is sort of goofy. If the player who takes the face di fake diamond is accused, then they only put the fake diamond on the table and the Don has to accuse them again if the Don thinks that they took any actual diamonds. So it's kind of like an extra life and ekes out some tension and it's fine. But again, it's another slab of rules on this butcher block that doesn't make the game any tastier. So there you have it, Mafia de Cuba. It's a game that's literally almost really good. Uh, you know what, if I'm honest, if you're anything like me, I would still recommend you buy the expansion because it's just, you know, more variety and I'm a sucker. And look, it fits in the base games box! More of that kind of thing, please. Oh, one problem with Mafia de Cuba I actually still haven't said yet is because players will literally be putting things in their pockets, be careful you actually recover your actual diamonds after you're done playing. The game comes with 15, I've only got 13 left and I have absolutely no idea who's got them. Ah, oh, f***. Oh, shit. I'm sorry, you haven't seen any diamonds around here, have you? Uh, you don't, like... Mm have my diamonds. No? Yeah, of course. Uh, Sorry. FBI, you're under arrest! You've got to be- ah, No, come on! Oh, oh, yeah. Really? So nasty.